He still hasn't arrived, but we can feel his presence. At this league meeting a few kilometers from the Slovenian border, the merchandise with Matteo Salvini's image sells well. They're flying off the shelves like hotcakes. People are buying all kinds of things, jackets, umbrellas, bracelets. <laughs> Maria is showing off her personalized T-shirt. I managed to get a photo of him, so my husband gave me this T-shirt for my birthday. When he arrives, he is welcomed like a rock star. Tonight, several hundred supporters have come out to hear their idol. Here, everyone is charmed by his relaxed style, his outspokenness, and his nationalist catchphrase, Italians first. Italians come first, which they have more rights than immigrants. My T-shirt says, the party's over. It's a message to immigrants, to the people that come here expecting to be looked after. I'm not racist, and I don't think he is either. But what we're witnessing here is an invasion. One of the secrets of his success is undoubtedly the way he mingles with the crowd. It's a ritual. Matteo Salvini systematically finishes his meetings with interminable selfie sessions. I'm here to get a picture with him. He's my idol. He's going to save Italy, nothing less. Look at how he has time for everyone. That's how politicians should be, close to people. His availability has become his trademark. Being closer to people has helped me understand things about the young person starting his own business, about the mother with an autistic child fighting the health service. I wouldn't understand any of that if I stayed locked up at the ministry. Matteo Salvini, a natural communicator, manages his own PR and prefers social media to the traditional press. Selfies after his morning run, during his meals, and video messages speaking directly to the Italians. It's important for me to speak directly to you before speaking to journalists, radio or TV, or issuing a press release directly from my office. Look, this is the interior minister's office. If Salvini goes on like this, the journalists will all be out of work. With his use of social media, he clearly wants to create a direct rapport with the people. It's a well-rehearsed strategy. A successful formula. Since his arrival at the Interior Ministry, his popularity keeps on growing. And today, he is the most powerful man in the Italian government. This afternoon, he is meeting with the Libyan Deputy Prime Minister and is back on his favourite rant, immigration. The majority of migrant ships crossing the Mediterranean set off from Libya. The problem is that tens of thousands of these guys are illegal immigrants and cannot be treated like real refugees. A hardline approach that he forced on Europe this summer with his decision to unilaterally close all Italian ports to NGO ships carrying migrants. They are indirectly helping people smugglers. We want a specific, limited and controlled immigration. Women and children fleeing from war zones can stay. A positive and respectful immigration has an added value. But in Italy, we do not want hundreds of thousands of people coming here and spreading violence. Is this new Italian immigration policy a threat for the rest of Europe? When questioned on this subject, Matteo Salvini becomes defensive. No, no, Italy's economic development is good news for Europe. Italy protecting its borders and reducing the number of arrivals, young people finding work. It's all good news for Europe. Europe is his new political challenge, and his objective is clear. Embody the nationalist movement and lead it to victory at the next European elections. A Europe controlled by technocrats, bankers and financiers has only brought insecurity, instability and poverty to a continent that deserves much better. So next May, we will see a resurrection of a Europe of the people, and I'm very happy to be part of this change. Political analyst Enrico Mentana 
believes that Matteo Salvini will find it easy to spread his ideas to the rest of Europe. He speaks to the base instincts of a large proportion of the Italian public, but also in Europeans, because the nationalist rhetoric of supporting nationals before immigrants is something we can find in France, Hungary and other European countries. Will he succeed in changing Europe? We'll have to wait until May 2019 for the answer.